If there's one thing we know about lowering our risk of getting cancer or having it come back, it's that reducing chronic inflammation is key. But if you're wondering what the heck chronic inflammation is, how to know if you have it, and how you can avoid it, you've clicked on the right video. First of all, inflammation can either be good or bad. When your body senses trouble, inflammation kicks in to help you heal. For example, if you sprain your ankle, your body immediately sends fluid and blood to that area and makes it swell as a protective measure. And that's what we call good or acute inflammation because it makes a short guest appearance, helps you to heal from a sprain, cut or infection, then goes away. Bad inflammation, aka chronic inflammation on the other hand, is like that annoying house guest that overstays their welcome and causes issues if it's not resolved. This type of inflammation is often caused by eating a lot of foods that aren't good for you because when your body recognizes something as unnatural, that's full of chemicals or preservatives, it sends those chemicals to your liver for processing and creates inflammation in your gut, which can sometimes show up as heartburn, bloating, or indigestion, but I'll be getting into this more in a minute. So if you eat highly processed or refined foods regularly, over time, inflammation in your body will become chronic because it's always there. You're not giving your body enough time to get rid of it in between healthy meals. And this is when it becomes dangerous. Chronic inflammation can create a perfect storm for cancer to develop. It's being recognized more and more for its role in the development and progression of cancer because it causes cellular changes and DNA damage that significantly increase your risk of getting several different types of cancer. And inflammation doesn't just stop at allowing cancer cells to develop, it also plays a role in promoting tumor growth and metastases. It provides the perfect environment for cancer cells to thrive, multiply, and spread to other parts of the body, making your battle against cancer even tougher. For example, people with chronic inflammatory bowel diseases like ulcerative colitis or Crohn's disease have an increased risk of getting colon cancer because they have chronic inflammation in their digestive tract, usually from eating certain foods. I've already mentioned that highly processed and refined foods create the most inflammation, but more specifically, sugar and white flour, processed meats, and anything saturated like fried foods or margarine, microwave popcorn, refrigerated biscuits, and artificially sweetened diet sodas are some of the biggest culprits. But what most people don't know is that even healthy foods can create inflammation if you have an intolerance to them. For example, I know that I have an intolerance to pineapple because it gives me major heartburn. And I know that I'm not allergic to it because it doesn't give me hives or make me itchy or anything else. There's a difference between being allergic to a certain food and being intolerant to it or having a sensitivity to it. So if you notice that you're getting heartburn, indigestion, or diarrhea, for example, whenever you eat a specific food, then you could have an intolerance to it because your body's creating an inflammatory response as a distress signal like a smoke alarm going off telling you to stay away from that food. Speaking of symptoms, how do you know if you have chronic inflammation? Can you have it without knowing? And how can you find out if you do? Are there tests for it? Yes, indeed there are tests for it, but it can be hard to diagnose because inflammation will sometimes play a game of hide and seek. It can often only show up randomly or sporadically. But some of the most common signs of it are constant bloating, painful or stiff joints, gastrointestinal issues like diarrhea, constipation, or acid reflux, and often a weak immune system, so you may tend to get sick often and take a long time to recover. But honestly, it can show up in several other ways as well, like constant fatigue, lower back pain, muscle weakness, or insulin resistance. Now there are a few common tests to detect inflammation, but the problem is that most of them, if not all of them, can't distinguish between chronic and acute inflammation. So if you have acute inflammation when you do the test, say from a cold, an injury, or even seasonal allergies, the test will detect it. So because of this, these tests aren't considered to be very accurate because they can give a false positive or a negative. Currently, tests for chronic inflammation aren't part of a routine medical exam for patients unless they're having symptoms of, say, arthritis or other autoimmune diseases. But if you find a naturopath or a doctor that practices functional medicine, they may test you for chronic inflammation. One of the most common is a blood test that measures a protein produced by the liver called CRP, which raises in response to inflammation. A CRP level between one and three milligrams per liter of blood often signals a low yet chronic level of inflammation. And it's not only food that can create systemic inflammation. It can also arise from smoking, drinking alcohol regularly, and regular exposure to certain environmental pollutants. Unfortunately, we can't always control what we're exposed to in the environment, but we can control what we eat and how we live. A diet rich in anti-inflammatory foods, getting regular exercise, managing stress, and avoiding harmful substances can all really help to keep your inflammation in check. 
If you've been suffering from any or several of the symptoms I mentioned earlier, or you've been diagnosed with a health condition related to chronic inflammation, like rheumatoid arthritis or type 2 diabetes, for example, obviously there are medical treatments and therapies available to help you, but it's also important to look at the potential underlying cause of your inflammation. Can you maybe cut back on the amount of sugar, white flour, or processed foods that you're eating? Can you get more exercise to get your heart rate up and blood pumping regularly? I'll get into this more in a minute. Or maybe you have a genetic condition where you're predisposed to having an inflammatory illness. Whatever it is, there are things you can try to reduce your symptoms and avoid triggering it that will also reduce your risk of cancer recurrence. Remember, managing inflammation isn't just about feeling better, it's about safeguarding your health and decreasing your risk for serious illness in the future. The connection between sugar consumption, chronic inflammation, and cancer development has been well documented in numerous studies. So at least start to think about how to reduce the amount of sugar you consume. Can you switch from drinking soda or juice to flavored or infused water? Can you slowly wean it out of your coffee in the morning? Can you find healthier alternatives to ice cream or cookies when you're craving dessert, like maybe fruit or yogurt? I would also encourage you to have a look at the ingredient labels on any processed foods you eat because they're almost guaranteed to contain sugar even if you can't taste it. These are often called hidden sugars and they can be really hard to avoid unless you know how to look out for them. But a great way to reduce the amount of sugar and processed chemicals you consume is by replacing anything processed with whole foods. And I know what you may be thinking, that sounds super boring and like a lot of work, but I can assure you it doesn't have to be. It honestly gets easier and easier the longer you can make healthier choices and the more you get used to eating whole foods. And before you know it, you won't even want to eat anything highly processed or sugary anymore because you likely won't enjoy it as much and you won't feel well when you do. If you want to learn more about which foods are the best at reducing chronic inflammation, I have three videos on this channel that will show you how to make anti-inflammatory drinks, snacks, and meals, which I'll link for you in the description below. Now, as I mentioned before, exercise is another amazing way to fight chronic inflammation, but make sure it's the kind that gets your heart rate up and blood pumping. Exercise also reduces body fat, which holds on to inflammation promoting substances, and it helps to increase the production of certain hormones that help to keep your inflammation in check. It's recommended that we all get at least 150 minutes of physical activity per week to stay healthy. But if you've been inactive for a while, start off slowly with say a five minute daily walk and work your way up to 20 or 30 minutes a day. And as always, if you have heart disease or a similar health condition, please check in with your doctor before starting any exercise. There are a couple more less common ways to help you reduce chronic inflammation that I wanna to briefly touch on. Something super easy and something you probably already do anyways is to brush your teeth regularly. We're all supposed to brush our teeth twice a day and floss daily to get rid of the bacteria that can inflame our gums, lead to infection, and actually cause inflammation elsewhere in the body. Yes, bacteria from your mouth can travel to other organs and create inflammation there. Crazy, right? Another simple thing to do is to eat fatty fish twice a week. Salmon or other fatty fish like herring, mackerel, black cod, or sardines contain omega-3 fatty acids that reduce inflammation. Omega-3s can also help to reduce your risk of stroke and for the type of brain inflammation that's associated with Alzheimer's disease. So obviously we know there's a strong correlation between inflammation and cancer, but by recognizing the signs and understanding your risk factors for chronic inflammation, you can take proactive steps towards reducing your cancer risk by making healthy diet and lifestyle choices. As always, if you enjoyed this video, please share it with someone who could benefit from it as well, and I'll see you in the next one.